The village of Muthudugu in western Burkina Faso doesn't have electricity or running water, and yet a sexual revolution is taking place here. Up until recently, every girl was genitally mutilated. I was five when I was cut. We were taken to an old lady and she used the same knife on all of us. But a few years ago, Ajara tells me, health workers came to explain that the reason that some girls died after the cutting and the problems with sex and childbirth were nothing to do with witchcraft, as they had all believed, but it was the cutting. Ajara says that the older women took some persuading, including her mother. Uh -huh. We all sent our daughters to be cut because we believed that without cutting, they will never be married. And now Ajara tells her mother she's going to have what was cut off restored. Mm -hmm. I would go if I could, but I'm too old. Ajara tells the village women about the new hospital which is offering clitoral restoration. I've seen it with my own eyes, she says, and I'm going. Twenty-six of them say they want to go with her. The oldest is 46 and at 24, Bebe is among the youngest. I'm going to get treated because I don't get any pleasure when I have sex, only pain. And now they're going to put that right. They set off in the heat and the dust on the four-hour bus ride to the town of Bobo. And to the hospital that promises miracles. Meanwhile, surgeon Marcy Bowers has arrived from Chicago. Due to start operating tomorrow, it's her first time in Africa, and today she visits Bobo's famous mosque. An internationally recognized expert on genital surgery. She's brought five American volunteer medics with her to help launch the hospital. This is uh, a crime against humanity, and uh, FGM should be banned. Uh, no one likes it. The women don't like it. The men don't like it. The people don't like it. And uh, I think its time is coming to an end. But we need to facilitate that by allowing the people that have been victimized to regain some sense of freedom. By now, the village women have finally arrived at their destination. The hospital, which cost a quarter of a million pounds and eight years to build, is an impressive sight. But to their surprise, it's closed. Ajara organizes a room in the hospital grounds where they can bed down and wait. <laughs> The next morning, the women welcome the local organizer, Ban Mani Trayol. She tells them to wait outside while she shows me the hospital with all its new facilities, which she says the government have just announced they're not allowed to use. Bani Mani is a Raelian, like most of those behind the charity Clitter Aid, which raised the money for the hospital. The controversial Raelian movement believe in UFOs and in promoting the pursuit of pleasure. She believes the government intervened because of the Raelian connection. I am really upset. I have to apologize to the women. They are so excited. It's about politics, and I don't do politics. 
There are 130 million women out there who need our help. And if someone wants to build a hospital to help them, you have to let them do it. She says that the mainstream religions here fear that these women might, out of gratitude, become Raelians. As far as the women are concerned, all they want is the operation they've come for. All is not lost. Local doctors have rallied around and provided a clinic in the town where the operations can take place. The women from the village are brought here to await their turn. Bebe says she's not scared, she's just angry that she was cut in the first place. I was cut when I was four years old. It hurt then and it still hurts now. I am very angry about it. When my husband approaches, I just don't want sex. Bebe is among the first. It's a simple procedure requiring a local anesthetic and lasting about 45 minutes. Dr. Bowers explains the women suffer different degrees of mutilation. No matter how severe, even with infibulation or type 3, we can always find the clitoris. Although the tip has been cut off, the rest lies under the surface. It's a question of locating it and pulling it up. You may prefer to turn away at this point. There's an area here that's missing. Go ahead and cut this. That is the clitoris right there. This uh, outcome should look amazingly normal, like, uh, like unaltered female anatomy. Voila, cut, and fini. E fini. By the end of the day, the team have operated on eight women. They're doing what they came for. Things are going well at the clinic. The word has got around, and the queue is growing as women fly in from Mali, Senegal, and even Kenya for the operation. The team have operated on some 29 women and are on their way to achieving the most important purpose of their visit, to train local doctors to take over. Then the American surgeons are told that their permissions to operate in Burkina Faso have been withdrawn and the operations must stop. The Minister of Health now reveals the reason for their opposition, that medical organizations should be focused on saving lives and not advertising their religion in an attempt to convert vulnerable people. And yet, none of the doctors here are Raelian, and I saw no attempt to convert the patients. We've operated on women from all over Africa, Sierra Leone, uh, Kenya, uh, Senegal, uh, pretty much the cat is out of the bag and is alive and purring. And as word gets around that the surgery is not only available but successful uh, and uh, even successful with local doctors here in Africa, I think the movement is only going to continue. The women from the village who are still waiting at the hospital for the operation are devastated. They must continue living with their pain. What's happening here at the hospital is like a metaphor for the campaign against FGM in Africa and worldwide, constantly thwarted by tradition, prejudice, religion and distrust. At the party planned for their last night at the hospital, there are mixed emotions. Bebe and 15 others from the village have been treated and are looking forward to their new lives. Ajara, who did so much to bring the women here, is among those who didn't. She has no idea if she ever will.